Turn your mic on, please. The Portsmouth Zoning Board of Review is now in session. Um, first item on the agenda will be a uh, roll call. And prior to that, I'd like to thank our two new alternate members, Mr. Andrew Kelly and Mr. Paul Lorenzo. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Did I? Right. Not bad. So, uh, Mr. Furell. Uh, present. Thank you. Mr. Raposa is absent, home ill. Ms. Horowitz. Present. Mr. Donovan. Present. Mr. Kelly. Present. Mr. Lorenzo. Present. And the Chairman James Nott is here as well. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is old minutes. And we have the minutes of July 20th, uh, September 7th and October 5th to be approved. Could I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve those three meeting minutes. Could I have a second? Second. Motion been made and second to approve the minutes of July 20th, September 7th and October 5th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, for those in attendance tonight, the board meets till 10 o'clock. Um, at such time at 10 o'clock, if we have not heard everything, it, anything left will be continued to our regular uh, scheduled meeting in November, which is November 16th. However, we hope to get through everything. Um, probably along about 9 o'clock, we'll know about where we are. So just bear with us. Um, so first item on the agenda is the continued petition of A. Bailey's, uh, which is Robert and Jean Robertson, uh, seeking a dimensional variance and a special use permit um, for upgrading and expanding their house on Prudence Island. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Mark Hartman. I'm an associate attorney at Anthony DeSisto Law Associates in East Providence. Do you have your last name again? Hartman, H-A-R-T-M-A-N-N. -N. Thank you. Our firm represents L uh, Bailey's LLC uh, and Jean and Bob Robertson in their application for dimensional variance and special use permit. Now, I, I know that the last uh, hearing on this matter was a couple months ago, so I'll, I'll refresh the board's memory on what the application is, sure. uh, but I'll, I'll forego the testimony uh, tonight, given that it's already on the record in the prior meeting. So the Robertsons are seeking a special use permit on this property because they're expanding a pre-existing non-conforming use on a pre-existing non-conforming lot on, Pru on Prudence Island. Uh, that requires under section see article 6 section a1c uh, a special use permit the enlargements are a bump out uh, to the side to provide for a dining area and a porch on the front uh, yard of the property the are there are also dimensional uh, variances required for that uh, given that the um, bump out will be going into a side yard setback and the porch will go into the front yard setback. Now, I would like to go through the, the standards once again uh, for the dimensional variance and the special use permit. Under article six, section D5, the first standard for dimensional variance is that the hardship from which the applicant seeks relief is due to the unique characteristics of the subject land or structure and not to the general characteristics of the surrounding area, not to the physical or economic disability of the applicant. The hardship here is the result of a prior uh, pre-existing uh, non-conforming lot, uh, which really inhibits the amount of uh, growth the Robertsons can have on this property. going to the second standard for the dimensional variance, that the hardship is not the result of a prior action of the applicant and does not result primarily from the desire of the applicant to realize greater financial gain. This is the condition that the uh, Roberts, Robertsons came to the property and it was a non-conforming lot uh, at the time that they purchased it. So uh, this was not the applicant's uh, fault for the need for a variance. Standard 
three for the dimensional variance, that the granting of the requested variance will not alter the general character of the surrounding area or impair the intent or purpose of the zoning ordinance or the comprehensive plan upon which the ordinance is based. This is essentially replacing a residential use with a residential use. So this is not changing the use. It's essentially remaining the same in, in the, the standard of use. Granted, the uh, dimensions of the, pro of the uh, existing structure are changing, um, but the use itself is still residential and it's not that much bigger. Fourth standard, the relief to be granted is the least relief necessary. Uh, this was a trailer. The, the Robertsons need some more uh, space to make this a comfortable home. They need space for uh, dining. They need a porch for sitting out on uh, to you know, wave at neighbors. Um, and that actually that goes to the comprehensive plan. Uh, generally, uh, zoning boards, planning boards like to see porches because it brings communities together. The last standard is whether this amounts to more than a mere inconvenience if they are uh, forced to abide by the ordinance without a variance. And yes, it will, because it will impair their ability to enjoy their property. Moving on to the special use permit under Article 6, Section A1C. And this is going again to the enlargement of the structure on a substandard lot. First standard, the desired use will not be de detrimental to the surrounding area. The desired use is residential. This has been residential for a long time. So this will not be detrimental to the, the surrounding area. Is it compatible with the neighboring land uses of the standard two? And yes, it is. Again, residential use, we're not changing it to some commercial or industrial use that will really change the character of the neighborhood. Third, will this create a nuisance or hazard in the neighborhood? No, again, residential, it's been like this for a long time. Uh, the use has been residential for a long time. So it will not create a nuisance or hazard in the neighborhood. Is added, uh, this is number four, is adequate protection afforded to the surrounding property by uh, use of the open space and planting? Again, this is uh, not changing much. So the open space uh, is not going to be affected. Standard five, safe vehicular access and adequate parking are provided. Uh, this is on Prudence Island. Parking is a little different out there. Um, a lot of people go uh, with go-karts. Some people go with cars. Uh, but when the Robertsons do use the property, they park on the property and on the street. Parking really is not going to affect the area. Going to the next standard, control of noise, smoke, odors, lighting, and other objectionable features are provided. Again, we're going from a residential use to a residential use. Uh, there aren't going to be any additional uh, odors that would, uh, you know, not be an, as a normal part of residential use. Um, granted, perhaps this property wasn't used for a while and it's been vacant, but that doesn't change the fact that this is still a residential property. It was, you know, you can expect that certain amounts of noise odors are going to occur on residential property. That's not changing. Solar rights of abutters are provided for. Now, the height of the uh, property is going to change slightly, uh, but only by a couple feet, it will not affect the solar rights of the neighboring properties. Next standard, the proposed special use will be in conformance with the purposes and intent of the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance of the town of Portsmouth. Again, as I've been repeating, I, I hate to sound like, uh, you know, just saying the same thing over and over again, but a residential use in a residential area, this is, uh, right in, in line with the comprehensive plan. Um, and then there's also section 4.2 of the comprehensive plan, which provides a strategy to designate Island Park, Park Common Fence Point and Prudence Island as priority areas for rehabilitation. And this is exactly what that project's doing. It's giving uh, a property that needed some uplift, some uplift. So this goes to the comprehensive plan. The last standard. The health, safety, and welfare of the community are protected. Again, same use, and the dimensions aren't changing much. Now, to get to the heart of, of the matter, uh, when we were here, I provided these standards. We provided testimony. 
And uh, I believe that that testimony and the standards uh, that we've tried to meet are adequate and are sufficient for the zoning board to approve the special use permit and the dimensional variances. There was discussion over the building permit issue. Uh, the neighbors alleged that the property uh, did not have a building permit when it expanded. This is not true. I will provide you with, let's see. Be careful, Mr. Hartman, because I've got copies of the building permits. Yes. So there, I think there's a little bit of issue with the um, the, the website, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, uh, if you look up the property on 038 Fairview Avenue, it generates different permits than if you do 38 Fairview Avenue. I got them both from the building inspector's Good. office. So I have the valid permit singularly in front of me. And I'll provide you with uh, copies as well that I have. <clears throat> Mark this applicant's exhibit A. Now, if I could turn your attention to the last page, please. <clears throat> You'll see here that the uh, Permit is for June 30th, 2019. And that permit was issued to Robert C. Robertson and signed by the building official. This was prior to the work over this summer. So there was a building permit for the work. There was a building permit to replace windows, doors, siding, and roof. Yes. There was no building permit to enlarge it. Now I'll point your according, according to the building inspector. It was known when they went over there that they discovered it had been enlarged. Yes. And that's why you're here. Absolutely. Because they did the work without a valid permit. Absolutely, Mr. Chair. So can I please point but your- you just said there was a valid permit, but not for what they've done and not for what they're here for. Yes. Correct? That's well, a yes or no. Can I, can I just point something out that's on the permit? A, yeah, just answer. It's a yes or no. They had- a they, Did they have a valid permit for the work that was done which was not part of that permit. The permit details. Yes or no. It's yes. A yes or no. Yes. Okay. Here's the reason show why. Me the, show me that permit where they were allowed to expand the building. Yes, Mr. Chair. If you please look to section H of the building permit in 2019, that shows that a max width of 12 was requested. The existing structure was 10 feet in width. Okay, but they've gone larger than that. And the maximum yes. depth, they've gone larger than that. So, so they exceeded that. Mr. Chair, so the, there was a mistake in the calculations and they went to 13, but there was an indication that the permit was going to be enlarging the property. Now- I don't have a valid permit because the draft is right here to do what they've done. Absolutely, so there was a miscommunication. So where I'm driving with this is there was a miscommunication between my clients and the building official. What was the miscommunication? They didn't ask? The, no, the, my clients did ask and they indicated here, was it accurate to the measurements that they ended up building? No, that was a mistake. There, but when the they realized the fact that there was a miscommunication and also a mistake in the numbers, they stopped work. And they, they, they've now come to this board requesting relief. And they also submitted a, a permit to the building official to remedy the mistakes they and the miscommunication. They stop work. They were told to stop and come here. Yes. They didn't do it voluntarily. Uh, yes. I, I mean, I, semantically, I, I would you know beg to differ with you, but... I think in the end, we are here. We're we're asking for the you know the required relief. We understand that there was a miscommunications, that there were mistakes, but we're here tonight. And the question tonight is whether they meet the standards. 
for relief under the zoning ordinance. Okay, continue. So I, I think that regardless of where how we view it, how the building official views the permit, how the board vers views the permit, the end result is we're here and you know we acknowledge that mistakes were made and we're trying to fix that and we're trying to move forward. And all we're doing here is requesting the, the required relief. And you know, the, the building official, they have uh, you know, they're more than happy to issue the permit as soon as the zoning relief is granted. So the, the question here tonight is whether the standards are met. Okay, any questions from the board? Um, yes, sir. Maybe Go I ahead. Have a question. Mr. Hartman. Yes. Uh, um, um, I, 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 I haven't looked through this building permit documentation yet, but but is there an amended building permit that, that um, better describes the work that's intended to be done or that has been done? Yes, sir, there is. And which one is that? That will be on the first page of the document I provided to you. 616.20, dated 616.23? Yep, that's the one. Expand existing home from with three feet. In the description on um, on the building permit dated 6-16-2023, item 18, description of work to be performed. Yes. I can see where uh, expand existing home width three feet from 10 feet to 13 feet by enclosing area over existing concrete, stoops, new walls, siding, roof and windows and doors, plan and details attached. Um, uh, uh, is that statement intended to convey both the bump out and the um, porch? No, uh, that statement is intended to convey the expansion to the south uh, to, to codify or highlight that the extension, extension they were trying to uh, build in 2019. So that is essentially what it, they were trying to do in the first place. So, 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 so I don't quite understand. If I could, uh, um, 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 originally the structure was just a rectangle. And my yes. understanding is the revised structure will, they're extending the rectangle along the long ax axis a little bit to put a porch. Yes. And they're, ex they're, they're putting a little bump out on one of the long sides on the northern side. Yes. But both of those aren't described in this building permit. I, my understanding of the process is that once the zoning is issued, then they'll go for the building permit for that work. Okay. Okay. So we would expect a, a, an additional re amendment or revision or new building permit. For those particular <laughs> features, yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Go ahead, so actually, Aaron, do, can you bring up the site plan? Do you have that? Just while he's doing that, Mr. Hartman, for the record on the um lot coverage page, a, you're not says you're requesting a zero uh, point zero one eight percent lot coverage variance, but lot coverage is only 12.9 percent, so you shouldn't need a lot coverage variance. Uh, Excuse me, bear me through my list of papers. Right. Take a look at mine if you want.
May I address the chairman? If, Absolutely. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe I wasn't present during the first part of this hearing. It probably was in August. It was. Uh, so, so, so I wasn't here for that part. So I probably need to recuse or, or not vote. Or am I allowed to vote? Oh, we have to start it all over again. Because that would have just the three of us. Ah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Happens. Yeah. I just didn't want it to come up later. Nope. Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to ask that question to my client. I hate to, you know, waste yeah, the Yeah, that's time. okay. I don't know if you just, it just dawned on us because this was back in August that of the members present here, only three of us were here that night. Hmm. So in order to continue forward, you'd have to represent. So you'd have to bring your, after your uh, clients back up again, just to reiterate what they okay. want to do. I'll uh, I'll confer with my clients to whether they would like to continue or to prevent present testimony tonight. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. It's up to you. Good catch. It didn't sound familiar. <laughs> that was a good catch. What's that? They can just start over. They just have to start over. Today? Yes. Yeah, if they want to. Members of the board, thank you for your patience tonight. I, I do appreciate it. And sure. um, so I, I have with me tonight, Mrs. Uh, Jean Robinson to provide testimony to the board. Okay. I have to re swear you to win again. Swear to tell the truth. I do. Full name and address for Heather, please. Jean Burt Robertson. Okay. And so uh, the address is 536 Fall River Avenue, Seacock, Mass. And also so 038 Fairview Avenue. Okay, so members here in this will be the four regular members plus Mr. Kelly will be the alternate on this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, Ms. Robinson, could you please tell me when you purchased the property on Prudence Island? Uh, yes, it was in uh, 2019, uh, early 2019. I think it was uh, February or March. Could you speak into the microphone? Oh, uh, February or March 2019. I forget it. Exactly. Yeah, is the mic on? It looks like it has a green light on it. If you have a green light on, yeah, it is. So when you purchased the property, what were you um what do you envision for it? Well, I'm very much care about aesthetics. So I purchased the property. I thought it was a beautiful location. I like Prudence Island. We had always wanted something there. And I envisioned taking what was an old manufactured home. It had been there for over 60 years, I think 64 years, um, and really completely redoing it so that it ended up looking like a little Greek revival. So that was my intent. And when you were making the plans for this house, what what additions did you propose? Well, um, actually, it sounds kind of crazy, but the, um, the gentleman who did our new septic, we put a new septic in immediately. Um, and Billy Silva said, I said, we really need to enlarge this. And he said, well, you got the concrete pads there. You ought to just come out over that. And I'm like, that's perfect. Then I don't have to do much more than just widen it because on the interior, it was only nine feet wide. And actually the bedroom had a room only for a twin bed. Um, there wasn't even room because of where the closets were. There wasn't even room for a, a full size bed, let alone a queen size so um, so we decided to uh, bump out the three feet where there was already uh, concrete pads and also like a, uh, in between the concrete was a little deck, a wooden deck um, and, and do all new siding. Uh, the 
the ceiling was like seven feet inside. So we wanted to go to eight feet, which is current code. Um, plus I'm pretty tall. So it felt really confined in there. Um, and we put together a, a building permit application to do that. I understand that there's some, seems like there's some discrepancy, but I actually had drawings um, and, and everything, but I didn't have uh, the ability to send them electronically. So they were mailed in. Um, the application was done electronically and I had a, I did not have a survey. I only had the town um, GIS. And based on that, it looked like we had way more than enough um, side yard setback. So I used the measurement tool in the GIS to figure out what my setbacks were. As it turns out, um, you know, we ended up uh, hiring Mount Hope Engineering to do a survey in May. The survey didn't get completed until July, um, but it turned out that our side yard, according to the survey, was way, was over, gosh, a good five feet from where we had been told by the realtor and where we believed it was, so. And as far as, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the, let's see, the, so you have a porch and a bump out that are going to be brand new to the property. Yes. Can you tell me the dimensions of the porch? Uh, the porch is gonna be seven feet deep and the width of the, the building, which is 13. And then the bump out is gonna be four feet uh, by eight feet. And those that those activities, the construction of those has not taken place yet, is that correct? That's right. I haven't submitted for the building permit for that yet because I knew I needed a variance for that. Now the uh, expansion to the south, that is three feet, is that correct? Yes. And it goes along the side of the structure? Yes. And it's over the existing concrete paths? Yes. Now, you had talked, uh, other than those changes, uh, will the footprint of the building remain the same? It will, and I should clarify, though, that um, in my application, I was looking at the town saying that the building was 10 by 32. When we actually went to to do, to add the the side mm -hmm. and to do the front and back, because of the way the thing was designed, it can't deliver. So we dropped a plumb bob. We couldn't do a, a weird shaped wall. So we dropped a plumb bob. So the addition in the front and back are just, they're even with where the roof was. Um, they're not any farther out. I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else to tell you, but the roof was obviously more than 32. The so, roof is 35. So speaking of the roof, how much height is going to be added to the roof? Well, we're we're going from a seven foot ceiling. I think it's actually a little less than seven to an eight foot ceiling. Um, and we're just doing a very minimal pitch. It's a, uh, a 512 pitch roof. So we're adding, uh, a foot and then the roof adds about maybe three feet, not even three feet, like 28 inches, I think, or 29 inches. So in your opinion, did that affect the solar rights of your neighbors? No. Did it affect their view? Not that I know of, but I haven't been so in their house. Anybody know that. I understand, but I, I, uh, Mr. Trash, know that it's going to be brought up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Now you also had mentioned that the uh, you're going to be installing septic. Is that correct? No, that's already been done. It's already been done. Yes. Okay. And what was it prior to the septic? I believe it was a cesspool. I, I'm not really sure. I just know. Yeah, we put in we put a brand new septic in and approved. Uh, you know, that's all we have the approvals if you want them. Stand. Is it not to interrupt? But is it? In the location where on this drawing it shows um, approximate septic. Yes. So and that's then, right where it was put. That's where, yeah, that's where uh, Billy put it. And then the um, the leach field, yes. that is um, all along 
that runs toward the street. Right. On, okay. On the third street side. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to run through the standards again. Um, now, would you say that you face a hardship if you don't have the re uh, requested relief? Yeah, yes, I do, because um, I, I could live with the kitchen with no dining room table, with no table to sit at. I mean, this was small, believe me. It's a tiny house. Um, but I realized that sitting at a counter bar, I'm 68, and I, I realized that sometimes getting up on those stools, I'd rather be able to sit on a regular chair. So I have, we can get a counter bar in there, but not a table without the little bump out. And you mentioned in the bedroom, there are only a string could fit in the bedroom. It, exactly. Yeah. In fact, you know, it was a single woman that owned it and um, it only had a, 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 I guess it had no bed in it when we purchased it, but it, there was only room for a twin bed. Now, considering the rest of the neighborhood, uh, do you think that the structure that you're creating is going to fit in with the rest of the neighborhood? Uh, definitely. I mean, I think that I'm really, I, I'm kind of shocked at the some of the reaction because we're really trying to make something that's beautiful and really attractive and improves the neighborhood. And in many of our neighborhoods, our neighbors recognize that and have been very supportive. But would you consider the installation of septic to be an improvement to the neighborhood? Uh, definitely. Now, uh, the next standard is the relief to be granted is the least relief necessary. Uh, this is a, these are modest uh, additions. Um, I suppose the question would be, could these be smaller and still accomplish the goals you were hoping to accomplish with this project? Well, to get a dining area in, all we're doing is a 40 inch bench on each side of that bump out with a little table in between. So, I mean, could we sit at a smaller table? I suppose so, but it, it's not exactly a big dining area. And the porch, um, you know, I thought seven feet was about minimal to actually be able to sit out there. We really wanted a covered porch because we have no trees and it's very sunny and we want to be able to get outside and and not necessarily be in the full sun all the time. And Mrs. Robinson, I'm going to move on from the dimensional variance standards to the special use permit standards. Do you think that your budget would be detrimental to the surrounding area? I'm sorry. Would do it I... be detrimental to the surrounding area? No. I think it's an improvement. Is it compatible with the surrounding area? Yes, there are other cottages and you know, larger homes, smaller homes, older homes. Do you think your use of the property will create a nuisance or a hazard? No. And will it preserve open space in the area? Uh, yeah, actually, we probably, even with the additions, have the smallest footprint in terms of the land size compared to all of our neighbors. And as far as vehicular access, how uh, how far is parked on your property and, and how is it done relative to the rest of the neighborhood? Um, we park on our own property. We just pull in off of the road and that's pretty much, some people do park in the road, but we don't. Hmm. Do you believe that your use will create any objectionable noises, smoke, odor, light, lighting? No, we're pretty quiet people. And we already talked about the solar lights of the property. That's correct. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that the property is going to affect the solar rights of the neighbors? No. Already talked a little bit about the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. well, again, a lot of these standards are a bit repetitive, so I, I hate to keep uh, taking it before it's time, but. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the health, safety, and welfare of the community are, will be protected uh, by the installation of, uh, of your use of the property? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Robertson. I do have a couple questions. So, um, Mrs. Robertson, you bought the house in uh, 2019, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, to the best of your knowledge, how long has that structure been on that lot? Uh, 63 years. 
Um, and you haven't moved the structure, correct? That's correct. Okay, so Aaron, can you bring it back up again? If I can say to the structure is not on wheels. It's right. it's solidly affixed. There's a crawl space that you can go into, and there are six concrete piers that it the steel is like embedded Sitting on. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if you look up at the um, drawing up there, where it says you can see what I believe the existing mobile home is. So this is the existing dwelling being repaired. And there's a little section on one side that has some cross hatching. That's the proposed addition, correct? That's right. The remaining of that, has that changed at all? Or is that exactly the way it's been for 63 years? The, to your knowledge. The part that's not cross hatched. Right. No, we, we had the original building permit that we right. took out. Yeah. We proposed to bump out over to the south and over where those two concrete pads were. Right. Well, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that five foot, six foot two towards lot map 77, that pre-existed. You aren't attempting to go back that way at all, correct? That's correct. Okay. Just I wanted to make sure. Okay. I, do you have, anybody have any questions, Ben? Anyone? Yes. Sue? No, that's, we're good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Sorry to make you come up again. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. For, I appreciate your service. I used to be on the planning board in another town, and I know it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. That yeah. concludes our presentation. Okay. Um, abutters or interested parties that would like to speak to this. Okay. I do have a letter to write. Um, it's from Elisa O'Meara, addressed to Aaron Lindo. It says, good morning, Aaron. This is a letter of support for Jean and Bob Robertson. They're neighbors of mine on Prudence Island. I own 18 Third Street, and I think we have talked on the phone in the past when I was renovating 18 Third. There seems to be resistance to what Jean and Bob are doing, and they are doing nothing but beautifying our neighborhood. They have taken a dumpy old trailer and they have turned it into an adorable looking beach cottage. There has been talk from other neighbors of them blocking views and not following zoning laws. I know they did not step out of line and only replaced what was there as far as blocking views. They did not. Furthermore, I have said to the newer residents on the island, the island is changing and has changed after COVID lockdowns. If people wanted a water view, they should have bought closer to the water. The land parcels are older and whatever has been existing is what people have adhered to or taken surveys, even though I can't imagine surveying would be hard due to the age of original plot plans as they are in the historic districts. I wanted to zoom in for the meeting today, but I have appointments I have to attend to. The Robertsons have my support and I do appreciate their taste and craftsmanship and their knowledge of renovations. As a neighbor, I appreciate what they have done to this eyesore and know they have been working hard not, to not overstep boundaries while still trying to modify this eyesore of an old trailer. I've encouraged neighbors to not make waves since we do share the island and we have to respect one another even in our difference of thinking. The island has changed and with newer buyers and neighbors, there will apparently be conflicts. This conflict seems to be useless and I personally do not see the conflict of boundaries compared to the old boundaries. If the neighbors of Buddy and the Robertsons could see this revitalization as improving their own property, they would encourage them to keep beautifying this neighborhood. <clears throat> as far as views, those will be a thing of the past unless you have purchased property with direct view of water. Good luck today. Not sure if this letter will help. I do not usually get involved, but I knew, do know how challenging renovating on this island has been. And we'll pro probably never do it again. Laugh out loud. Have a great day. Feel free to read to all. Anyone who moves to an island needs to understand it is different than renovating on the mainland. And instead of making the days longer and harder for fellow neighbors, trying to beautify an existing piece of garage, I think they meant garbage, to the average eye takes courage, determination, and a lot of patience. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and I hope all can be agreed to, and we can all unite and move forward. Signed, Lisa O'Meara, 18 Thursday, Prudence Island. Aaron, do we have anybody online? Yeah. 
Okay. That being said, um, A. Bailey's LLC, Robert and Gene Robinson, will be before the board of tax assessors map 77, lot 63, seeking a <clears throat> special use permit and also dimensional variance. They are seeking a 3.4 foot front yard variance, a 13 foot to the rear yard variance, a 1.5 foot south yard variance, Although their application showed a request of 0.018% lot coverage variance, they're well within the lot coverage and they don't require that. Applicant has given testimony that they do meet the special use criteria for this particular application. So, Mr. Fiorell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variances on the front, south side, and rear of the structure. Um, as uh, Mr. Hartman and Ms. Robertson noted uh, a small porch and space for a dining room table are common um, features in homes in the area and and to deny this application would amount to more than a mere inconvenience um, as mr hartman noted uh, article 6 section d of the dimension dimensional variances for substandard lots of record are met in addition item 4b um, refers to the reasonableness of this alternative, and I find the alternative to be very reasonable. With regard to the special use permit, I also vote to approve. As was stated during testimony, the Article 7, Section A, Items 5A through J, uh, with J not being applicable, have all been met. Thank you. Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve for reasons stated by them. Thank you. Mr. Donovan? Yes, I'm also going, going to vote to approve for the reasons that are stated. Uh, certainly, it, it was a mistake made initially, and they have admitted to it. And I don't think they should be condemned forever to that mistake. Um, and I definitely think it will improve the appearance of not only the building, but improve the uh, enhanced neighborhood overall. So I'm voting to approve. Thank you. Mr. Kelly? I vote to approve for reasons already stated. Thank you. Chairman also votes to approve for our reasons stated by Mr. Fural. I mean, yes, I don't believe there was any malicious intent to deceive the town at all by moving along. It was an oversight. Uh, when you really look at this, um, any encroachment um, is in areas that really aren't of much of an impact. The mobile home that's there is old, it's been in place. You know, the uh, letter that came in um, in support of it hits the nail on the head about views. And that's why I stopped the, the applicant's attorney because for those in attendance may not be aware of this, but views are not rights. So if someone is going to construct something and it may block your view, it's not a right. There is not a right. And also as an educational thing, Solar rights of a butters means blocking the sun. So to for someone to come up and say, well, they're 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 affecting my solar rights. Well, are they blocking the sun from your house? Well, if they're not, they're not offending your solar rights. So I think the applicant has given full testimony, and I believe that they have a uh, a legal use um, of a approved property. So you're all set. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Have a good night. Sorry to make you reiterate all that. What's up? Oh, you want it? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You have a great day. Uh, it's down. All right. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is a request for an extension from Cheryl Sherrill of 36 Cliff Avenue, requesting a one-year extension for a dimensional variance grant in September of 2022. Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, I have to excuse myself. This is one of our projects. Okay, and that's I'd fine. also like to make a point of the record. It's it's there's a Y at the end of Shirley. Oh, instead of an E. It's E Y. E Y. Thank yeah. you. But that's a spelling. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I, I printed it before I made that correction. That's so. right. Um, I do have a, uh, and so I may actually ask you this as to why. Because what we got is we have a letter that says, Dear Chairman, this letter is to request at the time to commence work under the above reference variant be extended for an additional one year from September 2022 to 2023. Um, but she doesn't say why they need the request. Um, basically, uh, it's two sisters. <laughs> So the design process has taken a very long time because it's designed by um, community, not <laughs> in individual. Um, and we're almost there, but also um, estimating has taken a while and the whole process has taken okay. much longer than we anticipated. All right. Thank you. Um, the applicant has a right to ask for two one-year extensions. Um, I see no reason why. Could I have, well, let's, Somebody begs to differ. Could I have a motion to grant the one-year extension? So moved. Could I have a second? Second. All in favor of granting a one-year extension to 36 Cliff Avenue, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, granted. Thank you. Thank you for that, sir. Okay, next item on the agenda is a petition by Tannis J. Tavernier for property located at Alden Avenue, Prudence Island, being tax assessors map 84, lot 126, which is zone commercial R20. Applicant seeks a special use permit, Article 7, Section E, to construct a 70 foot freestanding antenna tower to provide internet access. Um, yes, sir. Good evening. I'd like to thank Tavernia. the board for attendance tonight to hear my application. Hang on, Mr. Tavernia. Just for the record, myself, Mr. Furell, Ms. Horowitz, Ms. Uh, Mr. Donovan, Mr. Lorenzo will be hearing this. So go ahead, Mr. Tavernia. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, my name is Tanis Tavernier, owner and occupant of 0132 Alden Avenue in Prudence Island. I also own four button lots on the north side and the two. Uh, that we're here for today on the south side that abuts obviously the south reserve. What I'm requesting is basically uh, to erect a 70-foot tower over the 35-foot requirement or limit uh, on Alden Avenue, and uh, that's obviously under Section um, 7, I mean Article 7, Section E, and tower height uh, in reference to uh, provide an internet service for the for the neighborhood. Um, as you see in your application, I, I believe there's five out of the seven uh, internet connections that have uh, already uh, shown interest, and I believe there's up to 10. What my intentions are is to uh, uh, erect a 70-foot tower on the property that uh, your um, committee had uh, okayed me to uh, erect a uh, two-family, a two-bedroom two residence along with a uh, attached garage. This building is a metal building, um, and inside it's going to be erected also with uh, uh, home construction lumber, two-by-six lumber within it. Um, the, the request of, obviously, of 125% uh, exceeding the tower height would obviously lead me to believe that I needed at least a, an acre of land to place this tower. This tower is a, a freestanding tower. The base of it uh, is three-legged. There's 30 inches amongst each leg. So it's a very small platform. Um, it's going to be similar to or equivalent to one that was um, accepted and approved over on Hadley Street. So what the idea is, I'm working with uh, American Broadband, Arts uh, with us today, and obviously he's been in here for, I believe, three other tower uh, request, which were improved by the board. Um, my intentions are, our intentions are, is obviously once Hadley Street is constructed and up and running, I need a clear view of site. The average tree height in that in my neighborhood and actually what I had cut down when I uh, construct the building was approximately 65 feet. So we're looking at um, probably five feet above the tree line of what um, 
this tower is going to be. The east side of the property where the tower is going to be is fully wooded as well. So there's going to be very, very limited um, visibility of this tower because, number one, you have the south reserve on my south side. This other property that's fully uh, full of growth and trees on the east side. And then, obviously, my neighbors that had given me uh, letters of support in reference to Internet service that they need. Um, along with that, I've also had contact from the Newport County uh, Radio Club right here. I believe it's in either Newport or, or uh, um, Middletown, you know, which they've shown an interest possibly of just putting a small antenna on it uh, for a repeater because they have a lack of coverage between um, the east side and the west side of Narragansett Bay, and this would enable them to better communicate as well. <clears throat> My biggest concern is um, I work for a department in, in um, Portsmouth in which we lost radio contact. Radio contact, which includes fire and police for approximately two hours just the other day. And it also happened to be uh, another occasion that they had lost uh, the system. And unfortunately that system is statewide. So this would enable us that if need be, if we did have a disaster, and by all means it wasn't a disaster, but maybe an emergency situation where uh, we lost cell phone service or we lost radio communications with the two way radios with police and fire, this would enable us to have access to the outside world of, na of the uh, neighboring community if we needed other assistance. The uh, third item that uh, this would assist is basically the school is provided with service from American Broadband. Uh, if part of that system had gone down or does go down, this would be a supplemental service to supply the area communications as well as internet service for the school. Right now, the school utilizes it every day. Six out of the eight students that are in school utilize the internet service on a daily basis. So that's why I'm bringing it forward today. Uh, there would be, if possible, a small eight by eight shed that would handle the communications equipment that would be uh, to the rear of the uh, garage. If you had looked on the, uh, the plot, uh, the drawing, it would show the, again, eight by eight communication shed that would be at the base of this tower. The tower basically sits on a uh, concrete uh, platform that's approximately eight foot by eight foot by approximately five and a half feet deep in the ground. It's going to take approximately 11 yards of concrete, 11 yards of concrete. Uh, rule of thumb is probably about 22,000 pounds to hold up a tower that's under 1,000 pounds. Again, it's manufactured to be uh, freestanding. And again, the only thing that that tower would hit would obviously be my property, which again is a, a red iron garage manufactured here in uh, Texas. So what I was looking for is obviously the uh, variance of the height and to establish uh, or, or reduce obviously the issue of the 125 feet, 125%, uh, which would be again, probably a hundred foot clearance in any direction of the, uh, the tower itself. I don't think you come under the 35 foot height limit because it's an antenna, correct? Right. Yeah. So you don't require a variance for that. Okay. Do I need it? You re require, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. It does, it, antennas have a height, um, have a height uh, restriction. Right. It, it's not 35 feet. It's um, seven. No. What is it? I can. Oh, I can get the regulation. Yeah. I thought. I thought whatever it was, they had to have also 125 percent free fall radius. Let's see. Let me go That's to that correct. section. Yeah. Antenna is. I believe it I believe. over 35 feet may be permitted by a special use permit. And that's what we're here for is a special right. special use for the for the additional but just but you're saying that you don't your antenna is only going to be 35 feet. No, no, it's a 70 foot 70. tower okay. to exceed the right. 35 foot limit. Right. So you don't need a variance. What you need is a special use. A special, special, use. A special use. And then again, my argument referenced the the 125%. Right. Would be obviously number one is my dwell and it's going to be insured as well as the tower is going to be insured and the construction of the the garage being a red iron building along with a substructure underneath that's going to be meeting code for a, uh, a residence as well. Um, I don't I don't see any harm 
if there had been a subsequent uh, failure of the tower. Um, obviously, we're here in Portsmouth, and if that was the case, then we have a 200-foot lit tower next to the police and fire department that is within the Portsmouth Housing Authority. That would probably be in less than 100% of what the tower height is. And then again, like I said, Hadley Street, Hadley Street being a, a commercial business where obviously you probably have who could say 100 plus people in there. Uh, and obviously that was waived as well uh, in regards to the 125% uh, coverage. I see you scrambling over there. Okay. Um, go ahead and speak about whole uh, um, um, I agree we need a special use permit because right. the 70 foot antenna exceeds the 35 foot right. antenna. Do we also need a, um, a, uh, a dimensional variance because we do not have 125 percent free fall around it i don't believe i believe it's just special use permit am i correct mr gavin uh i, I think arguably uh to uh get relief from the 125 would argue the dimension okay so we'd have to know what that relief is i'm sorry so what the solicitor is saying is you would need dimensional release and relief. In other words, towers 70 feet, you've got to have 125. So in that arc, how much of a relief are you asking for? I am just asking for, obviously, just on my own structure, this this is going to be placed basic, basically adjacent to the, to the uh, residence slash garage that's on the property, they're going to be on the property. So I'm just asking for um, 50 feet, if you want to say, because the first 50 feet of my building is going to be garage, which isn't a residence. And the additional 20 feet of the 70 foot st structure is going to be the, the residence. So I'm looking at basically a 50 foot uh, leeway in the requirement of the 125%. Uh, I would, I would, uh respectfully differ that okay. that um, um the requirement is 125 percent of the height of the antenna that is correct so that's you know 110 feet maybe okay so oh, well, what's yeah, oh, yeah. i could figure that out that'd be great <laughs> yeah like i said i'm just throwing yeah. throwing it through my through my head here well really it's right out of garage. Correct, correct. So I think <laughs> so I think you're asking for the entire thing. The entire right? thing. Well, it's 87. Feet. Okay, 87 feet. Right. So you're asking for an 87 foot in that direction. Any direction. Well, no, if it falls for for example, if it falls to the north, then there might be a hundred or eighty-seven feet. And there may not be. Correct, correct. Right, exactly. Hang on. But but certainly in the direction of your home, because the antenna right. is right next to the structure, right? Uh, um, um, there's zero feet of clearance. So so we'd be ask you you would be asking for eighty seven feet if that of, if that's what dimension. I would just say if that's what needs to be done. That would be a dimensional variance relief, right? Correct. Yeah. I so agree. so you'd have to. So in order to do that, and this is a substandard lot of record. Yes, it is. Like that goes on to all. But that'll that be under the special use permit. Yes. Yes. So, um, what you'll need to do, which you can do right now, is request to modify your application. So, besides the special use permit, you're now requesting an 87 foot dimensional variance for the free fall radius of the proposed antenna. Would yes, sir. Like, yes, sir. Like I like I like to request a eighty foot variance on special on a special dimensional variance of eighty five feet for my uh, application as well. And unfortunately, it's not checked off, but it is stated basically in outside of the number of feet right. uh, that I was within the one hundred and twenty five okay. feet. Okay, so I need a motion to that. Okay, so I'm moved. Can I have a second? Do I have a Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Is is this a commercial use? This antenna. No, what the number one, I think they they described it as commercial use. It's a residential use. 
what this is, is this is basically a tower that a ham operator would put up. It's a little bit bigger. The base is just a little bit bigger than this podium. Oh, I thought it was broadband internet and it is. It's 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 providing internet for my for right. my uh for my neighborhood. Right. There's only one commercial piece of property on the on Prudence Island. Island. And that was established probably about 15 years ago where the store wanted a gas pump in which she was in a residential area as well, that they granted this one particular lot. Um Okay, so I'm, I'm only asking because uh, it seems like a commercial use. And okay. Should um, you be asking for that approval as well? No, not under what we're hearing. Nope, not at all. Um, so I have a motion and second to allow the applicant to uh, amend their petition um, to uh, request a 87-foot dimensional variance. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Um, so, Mr. Tavernia, um, I do have a couple questions. So, when you said the broadband went down over there in the last couple of days, not the broadband. What no, went down? No, it was the it was the communication the statewide communication system. Okay. It was eight hundred megahertz. Uh, town-wide communications, not it's statewide communications. What is over there now for internet service? Is it right just, now? Right now, American Broadband. But it's just strictly over the air. Right. What what they're doing right now, unfortunately, is is all this works on line of sight. Right. And with that being said, that's why the Headley Street's being requested and has been requested. It's in construction now. Right. Which we approve that. Right. Anything that goes from basically just south of the lighthouse mm -hmm. all the way to the south end right. has no communication, at least of internet yeah. from, from American broadband. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to extend it to the middle of the property, a middle of the island where I am, to at least expand it at least to the neighborhood of three or four streets. And that's what my goal is. You know, um, we so have it's basically almost like a repeater. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly Similar what cell towers where you have to have everyone so many feet or as we all know, our bars go from five. To right. One. Right. And just to clarify, you know, your uh, your uh, your statement is I'm not making anything on this outside. No, I'm, I'm outside. Not outside of anything. I'm not I'm not running a business to I'm trying to help. You know, I, I have professionals that live around the eye on, on our block, attorneys and so forth that could work out of their house and and. On one of the letters, it was even stated a letter of support is people want to maintain uh, communications with their with their facilities inside their house, like security, heat, so on and so forth. Or if they're coming over to the island, they can turn the heat on ahead of time instead of running it all the time. So I'm just trying to broaden it out. And like I said, that's why I have five of my seven people that want this in full support of it, because some of them work out of the house right now, but unfortunately, they can't. Right. They don't have quality service. They're, they're running off of like so, hotspots. So hard wired. So no. Uh, Mr. Lori, no. Uh, Lorienzo, it would be similar to um, if we were sitting here tonight and I happened to have one cell phone service on my phone and you had another one and you had no coverage and I have a hotspot and I said, well, you can connect to mine and get to the internet. Do you want to do that? Absolutely. <laughs> if you're good, I'll tell you how to connect to the town hall. <laughs> Okay, uh, any other questions for Mr. Lorenzo? No. I'm, I'm sorry for the uh, applicant. Anything else you want to add? I believe that's about it. Um, uh, do we have anybody that wants to speak to this? I do have a bunch of letters. Um, Aaron, is there anybody online? No. Nope. Okay. Um, I'll read the letters. Uh, this is from a Betty and Marco Esmondo. To whom it may concern, we live a few houses away from Joe Tavernia on Prudence Island. We are in favor of American Broadband installing a cell tower on Joe's property, allowing the neighboring residents Wi-Fi service. Having this Wi-Fi service will allow us the ability to work remotely from our home and also to install more sophisticated heating systems, etc. So many electronics today run off Wi-Fi service, which is almost essential for everyday living. Again, we're in favor of a cell tower to be installed on Joe Tavernia's property. If you have any questions, you can call us to contact, and they put their number. 
Um, thank you, Betty and Marco Asmundo. This is a copy of an email from a Colleen Donahue. Um, says, uh, I am writing this communication to inform the Prudence Portsmouth Zoning Board that I am in favor of the install of a tower to support internet connection on lot 84-126 on Prudence Island. The property is owned by Tannis and Suzanne Tavernia, Zero Alden Avenue, Map 84, Block 126. Please accept this letter as evidence of my support for a tower exceeding the 35-foot structure. My property is across the street and will be in full view of the tower, but she's for it. Um, to whom it may concern, we are writing to let you know that as an abutting property owner at 20 Longview Avenue, we have no injection to Joe and Susie Tavernia erecting a radio tower on their property at Zero Alton Avenue. Kind regards, Zachary and Shari Weinberger. Uh, dear members of the zoning board, my name is Ying Hu Ying Hua Li. I'm the owner of 135 Alton Avenue Prudes. Our house is directly across the street from Mr. Joe Tavernia. I am in full, full support of the proposed high speed internet tower that Mr. Tavernia planned to install on his property. Prudence Island has limited access to high speed internet due to its location and population side, and the proposed internet tower would help alleviate the inaccessibility to this much needed service. Having high speed internet would be of great service to me and my family. It would bring a modern necessity to a beautiful part of our community and state. I commend Mr. Tavernier and his effort and sacrifice to help the residents of our neighborhood. I hope this board will move to grant Mr. Tavernier the zoning relief that is needed to install the internet tower. Please feel free to reach out to me if there are any questions or concerns. And it's signed Ying Wally, Angela D. Lee, Laura Lee, Oliver Lee, Vincent Lee, Edmund Lee. And last, uh, members of the zoning board, dear members, my wife and I own property located at 07 Longview Avenue, Prudence Island. As an abutting property owner, I'm writing to state my support in granting Tannis Joseph Joe Tavernia relief from existing zoning use regulations in order that he may construct a freestanding antenna tower on his lot. For quite some time, I and several other abutting property owners have been in support of construction of a tower that would provide internet access for our area on the island. Joe is doing a great service to his neighbors by proposing to put the tower on his land. Please consider this letter my unequivocal support of Joe's application petition, even if I am unable to attend the scheduled public meeting where the application will be heard. Respectfully submitted, David Craven. Um, the one thing I do have to do, Mr. DeVernier, is I do have to do go through the special use criteria for the record. So, um, Let's see, A, the desired use will not be detrimental to the surrounding area. Uh, it will be compatible with neighboring land uses. Yes. Um, it will not create a nuisance or a hazard in the neighborhood. No. Adequate protection is afforded to the surrounding property by the use of open space and planting. Yes. Safe vehicular access and adequate parking are provided. Yes. Control of noise, smoke odors, lighting, and any other objectionable feature is provided. That's correct. Solar rights of the abutters are provided for. Yes. The proposed special use will be in conformance with the purposes and intent of the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance of the town of Portsmouth. Yes. And health, safety, and welfare of the community are protected. That's correct. Okay. And Section J doesn't pertain because it's not in the uh, town center district. So that being said, uh, Tannis Tavernia is before the board tax assessor's map 84, lot 26, seeking a special use permit and a 87 foot dimensional variance from the free fall radius for the purpose of constructing a 70 foot tall uh, internet um, tower on his property, Mr. Furell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variance for the free fall variance. Um, uh, as described, internet access is a um, legal is a legal use and in many cases a necessity in the 21st century. And there is no reasonable alternative other than a tower to provide this service to to this neighborhood. This hardship is not the result of prior actions by the applicant and is a function of the unique characteristics of 
Gruden's Island and this neighborhood. So to deny this request would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. With regard to the special use permit, I also vote to approve. Um, applicant testimony confirms that the Article 7, Section A, A through J criteria is met. Thank you. Ms. Horowitz? I vote to approve for all reasons previously stated for both. Thank you. Mr. Donovan? Yes, I vote to approve both the special use permit and the dimensional variance for reasons previously stated. Thank you. Mr. Lorenzo? I vote to approve for reasons previously stated. Thank you. The chairman votes to approve uh, both the dimensional variance and the um, special use permit for reasons previously stated. I mean, we all know that, you know, high speed hardwired fiber optic internet's not headed over to the island anytime soon. And I have to agree if it meets any of the criteria in special use permit, it's the health, safety, and welfare portion of it. So um, it's been approved. Thank you're you. You're all set. Have a good night, guys. You as well. Thank yeah. you. Okay, we'll hear one more and then we'll take a recess. All right. So next item on the agenda is petitioned by Roger Lemos. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes. Roger Lemos, off a property located at 36 Mount Tom Road, Prudence Island. We should have just gone over that time. I know. Should have got on the boat, just gone. Uh, being tax assessor's map 74, lot 34, which is zoned residential R20. The applicant seeks a special use permit under Article 7, Section A1C, and dimensional uh, variances under Article sec, uh, uh, that. Article 4, Section B, Article 6, Section A4, to construct an attached deck on a substandard lot of record. So raise your right hand. It's where to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Full name and address for uh, <coughs> other place. Roger Lemos. Home address 87, Hadley Rise, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02360. Okay, Mr. Lemos. Yeah, as, as requested, the dimensional variance is for a rear lot setback. The R20 zoning requirement is for a 30-foot uh, rear lot setback. And if you look at the package I provided, um, the address at 20... 36 Mount Tom Road is on the southern side of my property. Ergo, the northern boundary is therefore, by zoning regulation, the real lot. Uh, however, because Narragansett Bay is to the east, all houses are orientated towards Narragansett Bay. Uh, so I don't meet the real lot setback. I would, however, meet if that was interpreted as my side lot, I do have a 15-foot setback from the side lot. Obviously, the house, which is a pre-existing condition and is grandfathered, uh, is much closer to the rear lot line. The special use permit is simply because it's a substandard lot is currently zoned. Uh, when that uh, plot on Prudence Island was laid out back in the 1940s and 50s, all these lots were laid out as 75 by 100 foot lots. Uh, therefore, they're uh, significantly undersized from the current R20 zoning. But when I do the uh, space calculations, uh, even with the addition of a modest 12 by 14 foot deck, I'm still under the 20 foot lot coverage limit for that zoning. Um, really, um, I know it's hard to tell from the pictures I provided, uh, but there's a fair slope to my front yard as it runs from west to east towards Narragansett Bay. Uh, it's become a little bit of a hazard uh, to some of my older relatives uh, as far as having a safe place to sit. So I'm just trying, going, looking to build an unobtrusive ground level deck to have a flat area adjacent off the front of the house. Really doesn't impact any of my neighbors. Uh, it will be uh, very uh, un basically invisible. Um, so... Uh, doesn't impact any sight lines, uh, any air circulation, certainly doesn't impact fire access or anything of that nature. Give me one minute. Mm -hmm. You gotta be missing it. It's, 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 it's oh, bad. it's the blue folder, so. Yeah. Thank you. We're just not used to getting things like this. 
Well, for the last 40 years of my career, I've worked as an engineer to permit major power projects throughout the United States. So I kind of knew what you were looking for. <laughs> so um, while I'm waiting for kind of this to work up. So just kind of looking at your aerial view on page three. And I'm looking at the house to the, I'm guessing that's the north of you. Yes. That's the Gorton's house. And that has a deck on it. I built that deck for Eileen Gorton. About and the house ago. to the north of that one looks like it has a deck on it as well. Yes, that was a Chet Warner's old house that was recently renovated. It would seem like I could probably pick up a number of houses there that all have decks on them, correct? Yeah. With the exception of yours. Yes. Right. Got it. Okay. Um, I do have to, let me get this on the record, the special use criteria, which is the A through E for a substandard lot of record. So if this were approved, would it still allow adequate space of fire protection? Yes, sir. Would it provide adequate light and air between buildings? Yes, sir. Would it alter the character of the neighborhood or adversely affect neighboring properties? It would, it would not. Would it create lot coverage and setbacks less than the average lot coverage and setbacks of adjacent properties? No, it's still under the 20%. Would it impose a substantial detriment to the public or to immediate neighbors? No, sir. Okay. That's what I thought. All right. Uh, anyone have any questions for Ms. Luimos? So I'm looking at something up. So if you go somewhere else first. I don't think there is anyone else, but okay. <laughs> we can wait. I just, you see, what? am I any issue is have you looked if you're in this the flood zone that's what i was trying to look up because you're right by the water i don't know if you are but that could affect what you're allowed to do i don't think i am but i haven't researched it no you that's on the um east side of the island right yeah yeah that's kind of up there yeah that's there's a Just lot of height there up. yeah that would be my only question yeah i would find it hard to believe it is Sue. Okay. Okay. And that would be a CM CRM issue. Yeah. But not ours. Well, right. it's a building permit. Yeah. It is right. Yeah. It's not just yeah. CRMC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that would be what 250 feet. Are you within 250 feet of the coastal feature? Yes. So that becomes a CR. That but that's a, a CRMC separate. issue. Yeah. Do this. But that's not our issue. And not for us to take into consideration. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Which members are voting on this? You will be voting on this one. I'm alternating between the two. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else? That's it. Thank All you, right. sir. I have to ask for butters or interested parties. Um, anyone online, Aaron? No. No letters either, right? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. All righty, so Roger Lemos is uh, before the board for property located at 36 Mount Tom Road, seeking a dimensional variance for a substandard lot of record in a 15 foot to the rear yard of his property, which is what is a buddy Narragansett Bay, uh, wishing to construct a 12 by 14 foot deck. Um, applicants given testimony that there are other um, properties directly abutting him and directly abutting those abutting properties that all have decks. His is one of the few in the area that do not. Um, then Mr. F oh, excuse me, Mr. Fierau. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variance of the rear yard setback of 15 feet. A deck is a common accessory structure in the neighborhood and probably across Portsmouth. Um, there is no other place to put it other than there because of the structure of your home. Uh, to deny this would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. Uh, with regard to the special use permit, the Article 7, Section A, A through J criteria has been attested <laughs> to be met. And therefore, I approve the special use permit as well. Thank you, Mr. Gural. Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve for reasons previously stated. What I would say to you, looking at the map, you are borderline on one of the flood zones, AE. So I would just check 
Yep. Before you go yep. too far. That I vote to approve. The Thank you. Previously stated. Mr. Donovan. I vote to approve both the uh, special use permit and the dimensional variance for reasons previously stated. Thank you. Mr. Kelly. I vote to approve both the special use permit and the dimensional variance for reasons previously stated. Thank you very much. Chairman also votes to uh, approve both reasons previously stated by Mr. Mm -hmm. Fumel. So you're all set. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Great. the board's going to take a five minute recess. See, he's. Turn your mics back on, please. Zoning Board of Review is back in session. Uh, next item on the agenda is petition by Richard Grady, applicant for property located at 57 Cliff Avenue, Prudence Island, um, being tax assessor's map 84, lot 22, seeking a special use permit under Article 7, Section A1C to construct an addition on an existing structure on a substandard lot of record. I knew we should have gone to Bruce Island tonight. Hi. Raise your right hand. So we tell the truth. Yes. Full name and address for Heather, please. Richard Grady, 43 Tide Mill Drive, North Kingstown, Rhode Island. Okay, Mr. Grady. Um, we're applying for a special use permit for enlargement of a structure on a substandard lot, renovation of our second floor to allow for a small bathroom since we're getting older. And we have trouble at night going down the bath down the stairs to the bathroom on the first floor. So you require no dimensional variances whatsoever, no, no. lot coverage variance. Nope. It's just that it's already a substandard lot of record, and that's yes. why you're here. So um I have to go through the A through E criteria, which if this were allowed, would it still allow adequate space for fire protection? Yes. Would it provide adequate light and air between buildings? Yes. Would it alter the character of the neighborhood or adversely affect neighboring properties? No. Would it create lot coverage and setbacks less than the average lot coverage and setbacks of adjacent properties? No. Uh, would it impose substantial detriment to the public or to immediate neighbors? No. Any questions at all for uh, Mr. Grady? Um. Aaron, anyone online? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lorenzo, you'll be voting on this one, by the way. Um, so seeing none, we have no letters. Uh, Richard Grady is before the board um, for property located at 57 Cliff Avenue, which is tax assessor's map 84, lot 22, seeks a special use permit uh, to construct an addition on an existing structure on a substandard lot of record. Applicant has given testimony that it requires no um, variance or setback relief, no lot coverage relief, just it's a substandard lot of record. So, Mr. Furell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the special use permit. Um, the Article 6, Section A, 4A through E criteria for a special use permit on a substandard lot of record has been attested to be met and that's all there is to it. Thank you. Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve for reasons stated by Ben. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. I also vote to approve for reasons stated by Mr. Furrell. Thank you, Mr. Lorenzo. Vote to approve for reasons previously stated. Chairman also votes for reasons uh, previously stated as well. So you're all set. Sorry I had to come all this way. That's you. fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. He gets a good mainland cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and now the attorneys start. <laughs> how quick we get out of here depends on how long they talk. <laughs> I didn't mean that. My friends last with out of town witnesses, so I have promised to move very quickly through these, and I don't mean to approach them, but I can do them very quickly. We've known you're coming tonight. I saw your brother earlier today. I would have told him. I'm to not pause. trying to shorten my job, but I'm going to try to do it quick. If you have questions, I'm here to answer them. All righty, so this is the, uh, and uh, by the way, Mr. Kelly, you'll be on this one. Okay, so uh, this is a petition of Deborah and Frank Pine, uh, tax assessor's map 67, lot 19, proposing to construct a garage requiring a 4.6 foot side yard variance um, for the purpose of constructing a garage. So Mr. Pine and the Pines should be online. They are. But I'll do the talking for them now. Uh, basically, if you look at this, this is this is Black Point of Black Point Farm. This is the piece that goes out and extends out into the water. 
And I say that because it's a very irregularly shaped block. It's nowhere near a square. It's kind of a long peninsula. And based on that long peninsula and coastal resources, there's a large portion of this property that is not buildable because it's within the buffers and the things. If you look at the aerials, there's currently a driveway and the septic system that's located is, is part of the driveway. So it makes sense that the garage is connected to the current driveway and the current area. The only place to put a garage, because you cannot go closer to the water and you cannot go on top of the uh, septic system, the only place to put this external garage or detached garage is where it is located. It re would require no relief from uh, three of the four setbacks. And it certainly doesn't require lot coverage. The lot is close to 79,000 square feet. I think the total of 2,700 makes a 3% lot coverage. So it's really just a, a thimble out there on this big piece. The issue is the sideline is 20 feet in an R40. And this is requesting this, uh, this small variance. The reason when you, when you talk about the least relief necessary, you'll see that the sideline is irregular and the box is, it's not square to the, uh, it, it goes along the angle. And if we squared that building, we'd be asking for a larger variance. So we had our architect actually step back in three steps that area. So the closest step is uh, the least relief necessary and minimal. That still requires, that still gives us the depth to park a big car on one side and a small car on the other side and to have a uh, small area for a workshop. His house is on a slab. He has no basement. His house has no attic. So some of this is storage. As you know, there's a garage that's part of the original house kind of attached as a, as a, a part of the first floor. So this additional space is for his storage and his wife's storage. It's for personal use. There is a bathroom on the second floor and we always ask, is there a kitchen or a wet bar or something that looks and smells like a uh, accessory use or it looks and smells like a Airbnb? This is not the case. They're online saying, that's not us. That's not what we're doing. You want to put a restriction that it's not an Airbnb. That's fine too. It's just a garage and workshop for the occupants of the house. And it is the least relief necessary with those step backs. And the only place the garage can be located given the existence of the septic system and the coastal feature. It's a 4.6 foot side yard variance because 20 feet is required. And it's because it's going to be 15.6 feet away, that requires the 4.6 foot variance. And it's really no more to it than that. It's only a small corner of it, correct? Well, if, if that building was squared, no. we would be at almost, a 15 foot variance. Right. They step it back and yeah. they stepped it back. One, the architect stepped it back in ways knowing what the inside of the building needed to do to still be deep enough for a car in that area or a right. smaller car. Yep. And so we originally saw it and we asked them to step it back. So I could argue least relief necessary. Right. And it really is a he very heavily wooded area on that side. And it really would, shouldn't be seen or heard. But I also gave you the uh, the plans for the garage. You can see that the architectural integrity matches the house. It matches the plans. It, okay. So it's designed to, to look like it matches. Any questions for the applicant? Aaron, anyone online besides other than us? No. Do we have any abutters out there that would like to speak to this? See none. Uh, Deborah and Frank Pine before the board for tax assessor's map 67, lot 19, seeking a 4.6 foot um, side yard variance to the Northwest for the purpose of constructing a garage on their property. Uh, the applicants given testimony that uh, it's the only logical place to put it due to coastal uh, features on the property and also the septic system. Um, more than ample uh, property. Um, this would only make it a 3% lot coverage, which is extraordinary. Um, so Mr. Furell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variance. Uh, a garage is a legally permitted use 
and is a common accessory structure on property all over the town. The hardship is due to the unique characteristics of the property and not the result of any prior action taken by the applicant. Granting this variance does not affect, does not affect the uh, characteristics of the surrounding neighborhood. And to deny this request would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. Thank you. Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve for reasons stated previously. Thank you. Mr. Donovan. I vote to also approve for reasons already stated. All right. Kelly. I vote to approve for reasons already stated. Thank you. Chairman Vols also votes to approve for reasons previously stated by Mr. Fural. All set, Mr. Schmel. Thank you. I think I get the next one too. Uh, next item on the agenda is a petition by uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Leonair de Silva. How is it? I say Leonair. That's what I say. Leonair de Silva, 36 Swan Drive, Portsmouth, tax assessor's map 67, lot 96, seeking a dimensional variance of 10 feet to the south and also a 2.07% plot coverage variance. And I believe if you bring the map up, there's also a side yard variance of 1.5. Did I miss that one? Anything's possible. Mr. Lorenzo, you'll be on this one. Okay. So again, Court Chappelle 171 Chase Road. Uh, this is a house down on Swan Drive with a 25,800. Aaron, can you bring this up on the screen? Which one? You, which one? The uh, site map. Yeah, because I only see the one side there, Mr. Spell. If you if you look at the, it got a little confusing because if you look at the existing house, yeah, there's a total of three hundred and one square foot of additions, but they are five little additions squaring a building. One's one hundred eleven <laughs> feet, one's fifty five feet, and they they combine to be three hundred and one feet on the main house. Right, and I'll show you if we put the. Uh, I don't have the um the site plan. I was never going to the electronic copy the site. Plan. Oh, I sent it to you today. Um, I mean, we have it. Okay, if so. you have it, I can. I'm sure explain it. Okay. So what the, let's start with the fact that it's a twenty five thousand eight hundred and sixty square foot lot in an R forty area on, uh, Swan Drive. So it is technically a substandard lot of record, even though it's big enough that we should be able to try to fit everything where it is but the house is located. The house as located has a bunch of what I'll call nooks and crannies. It's not a rectangle, it has some areas. And part of the addition of the entire house is to bring the house up upgrade and some of that is squaring it off. So in most of the instances, the additions to the house, which require no lot coverage variants or no variances at all, are just squaring off those 301 square feet. So when you look at the proposed house additions, you see 301. When you see 301, you go into the upper left-hand corner of the house where it wasn't square, that squared off. And across the back, it's squared. There's a small bay window in the front. Those are what uh, make up the addition of 301. And again, require no relief. If you look on the back side, you'll see a proposed deck off the back side on the second floor that has a rounded front. That's 111 square feet. That deck, the corner of that deck on the second floor sticks 1.5 feet over the 20 foot sideline. You see that? Yep. So that's on. that's the one and a half foot sideline variance to the west of the east. To the east. I have Josh Morrow. Because we don't have anything in our documentation that shows that request. That uh, let's get them down, and then you're probably going to have to modify your because. Can it's it, also a substandard lot of record, right? I have that in Article 4, Section B. Right, but we don't have that as part of our application either. I have so I have the signed okay. application. We did, you know, and under the grounds for variance, mine says applicants to propose to construct a pool house on a substandard lot of record 
requiring a 10 foot rear yard variance where only 6.5 foot setbacks exist now. I'll go over that. And a right. 1.5 foot side yard variance. Right. This proposal, so I do have it in the grounds for variance. Right. See, the thing about this one, and Aaron and I were talking about it earlier, is the the application came through with, with some numbers. In fact, the lot coverage came through blank. Yeah. Just some numbers. I said, no, let's do it. And it, it came with the totals. It right. didn't have it. And, and then, one of the reasons, my fault, but one of the reasons is the proposal to the building is 301. There's not lines to go. The proposal of the building is a five by five foot addition in the upper northwest corner, a one by nine addition, which is the candelier over the door, a eight by seven addition over here. Those on the house combined to 301. I took the 111 and, and this is all on the plan uh, because Mr. Principe set out all of those on the plan. Josh Murrow is here from his office. The 111 is the deck that, what direction is that? East. East. That deck that has a rounded front. Right. If you look at that, you'll also see the setback line. You'll see where there's the, the word 18.5 there. That's because it's 18.5 feet from the sideline where 20 feet is required. So the structure of the house is, of course, and the structure of, that's not an area of the additions. All the structure meets the setbacks. The second floor deck hangs one and a half foot over at that point. Okay, so. That's that one. Front yard, no request. Right. Side yard to the east, 1.5 foot. Correct. Request. Now rear, in, rear, 10 foot request. Right. Now let's go to the rear. The yep. current, we showed you what exists. What exists in the current is a shed that exceeds 120 feet down in the south east corner. That shed, despite the fact that it should meet setbacks, doesn't come close to meeting setbacks. And it's only five feet or four feet away from both the rear line and the sideline. As part of this petition, that shed is being removed. So I'd like to argue we're bettering the situation. Also, if you look on that plan, you'll see a circle right near uh, in the southwest corner of the proposed pool. That's the existing pool. Existing above ground pools don't always need to meet structural setbacks, and it didn't. But off of that was a full patio and full deck built. So the in, how close it was to the property line was six and a half feet. By eliminating that pool and eliminating that deck structure, we push the pool and the pool house. And again, this is not a pool house that is a accessory structure. This is just a bathroom and a pergola, a covered patio. This is not a bedroom. This is not a kitchen. This is just the uh, clearly a pool house the way we used to define pool houses before we decided every pool house was a two bedroom cabana, old school. <laughs> um, so you look and you can see from the corner of the house, we push the pool and the pool house further from the property line than it currently is and is far north to leave uh, room between the house and the and the pool house and the house and the pool to meet our criteria that we have safe fire access to the back, meet our criteria that we have adequate separation for buildings. When you, we can push the pool house and have pushed the pool house as far east as possible. So it request it required no sideline variance on the west side, but the rear where it was six and a half and because uh, R40 has a 30 foot rear yard setback, we require that 10 foot variance because the closest point now is 20 feet. Remember if this was R20 or R30 or other zones, it would be enough, but the R40 zone, which is a little rare for town, has a 30 foot rear yard, not a 20 foot rear yard, That and we're holding to 20. That's what is, that's the reason for the 10 foot rear yard setback. So the only requirements are the one and a half foot to the east and the 10 foot to the rear. When, quite frankly, the chairman said, break down the lot coverage, the lawyer broke down the lot coverage and the patio, the pool was covered, but the patio wasn't. As for new members of the board, we didn't use to, call the, we didn't use to count the aprons of the pool. 
two years ago, we just started counting the aprons of the pool. When you count the aprons of the pool, but we don't usually count patios, but when an apron connects to a patio, now what is it? So I did the calculations doing all of the patio and all of the aprons, and it would be 2207, which would require 207. Josh is here to tell you that the patio that's going in, that's the apron, is also imper is also pervious pavers. And I don't know if we've ever talked about whether we're going to have pervious pavers, but I have an abundance of caution. It's either a 207 lot coverage variance or no variance requested because there's no lot coverage variance is required for all of the buildings and the pool. We are still at only 17%. We only get to 22% if you count all of the patio as pervious material, which we didn't use to count. And still, I don't know if anybody's ruled on whether impervious pavers are gonna count. That's, I, I'm trying not to reinvent the wheel here. So however you wanna do it, I just- We'll just go with the lot coverage variance request. So that's the criteria. Now, because this is a substandard lot, we also have that portion of our special use permit and it uh, with the criteria that we'd allow adequate space for fire protection. That is, yes, we do, uh, and all the way around the outside, because again, we, we still maintain not less than 18 feet from any building, but it's also the reason we didn't keep shoving that building towards the house. So there wasn't adequate fire movement between the pool and the house. We provide adequate light and air between buildings. Again, that building with that separation uh, to minimize the variance allows us to do that. It won't alter the character of the neighbor, it, neighborhood. It is a nice neighborhood with houses. It is still going to be a nice neighborhood with houses. It's just this house gets a little bit of an uplift. They already have a pool. They already have a deck. This is clearly a nicer pool and a nicer deck. Uh, I should tell you that they have five children. And this is the reason they need their own health club. <laughs> Uh, they would, wouldn't, it won't create lot coverage and setbacks less than the average lot coverage and, and setbacks in the area. Again, it already existed with more lot cut with, with more variances and things closer to the boundaries than we've been able to push them by removing the shed and by pushing the existing pool and structure further north. And it won't oppose, impose a substantial detriment to the public or immediate neighbors. Again, the most affected neighbor on this is Peckham Brothers behind, which is a commercial operation. So we always kind of look to if we're encroaching in a neighborhood, who's the most affected neighbor that we're getting closer to. In this case, it's Peckham Brothers, a construction gravel site around a nice neighborhood. I don't know if the roses are on uh, line. They were gonna try to be Manny and his wife. Uh, they did come to my office and tell me they were in full support of the petition. Any questions for the applicant? So, so anything? Nothing for no. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chappell. Uh, Aaron, uh, anyone online? No. Any abutters or interested parties to this? Seeing none, Leonel de Silva is before the board for tax assessors map 67, what, 96? seeking a 1.5 foot side yard setback relief to the east, a 10 foot to the rear yard setback relief, um, and a 2.07% lot coverage variance um, for the purpose of, um, yeah, okay. I've got to read through all your stuff here. Well, when you do that, construct their pool house and minor additions to the primary structure on a substandard lot of record. Applicant has given testimony. They do meet all the uh, special use criteria for the substandard lot of record. Uh, Mr. Furell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variance, uh, that being a rear yard dimensional variance of 10 feet and a side yard to the east dimensional variance of 1.5 feet. Um, uh, a swimming pool for a family with five children isn't uh, an unreasonable feature. And uh, the placement of the swimming pool is necessitated by the characteristics of the lot 
and replace a, an above ground swimming pool that was more encroaching on property lines or on setbacks than the current. Um, granting of this variance doesn't change the characteristic of the neighborhood. Uh, it is the least relief necessary given the nature of the property where to place a pool and a pool house. And the denial of this request would amount to a more than would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. I also vote to approve the special use permit for a substandard lot of record. As testified to, um, this lot satisfies the criteria set in Article 6, Section A, 4A through E. Thank you. Ms. Horowitz. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. I also vote to approve the special use permit and dimensional variances for reasons stated by Mr. Curiel. Thank you, Mr. Lorenzo. I vote to approve for reasons previously stated. Thank you. Chairman also votes to approve for reasons previously stated by Mr. Furell. So all set, Mr. Spell. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm on the next one, Miss. Very quick. Wow. This, huh. this, this one really should be quick, but we'll find out. Uh, this, in my opinion, should yeah. be. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So next item is a petition by Kathy and Jeffrey Siegel. Uh, for property located 227 East Over Road, tax assessors map 65, lot 17, zoned uh, R40, the applicant seeks a dimensional variance under Article 5, Section I-5 to construct a fence and cause a swimming pool under six feet. Go ahead, Mr. Spell. So just for the for the people that haven't been at some of the other ones, this is a request merely to make a six-foot pool to a four-foot fence. Uh, those of you that are familiar with the state building code know that the code, the state building code is four feet. There have been a number of arguments in a number of communities that thou shalt not alter the state building code and that the zoning shouldn't, uh, that no town ordinance can change that. Uh, originally, we came in and granted a bunch, some variances under six feet and granted to four feet. Recently, uh, I think the new planning department taking the position that the new ordinance will be written to be consistent with the state ordinance has made it um, still necessary to come here, but but more of a stamp. And I can get that on the record. For, for the record, Aaron, the plan as we rewrite the zoning ordinance going forward is to go closer to the state code of four foot versus six foot, correct? Exactly, four foot, yeah. All right, thank you. Oh. And I will tell you, remember that the gates all still have to be higher than that. They yeah. still have to have child proof they gates. Can. So there's no relief in a request for four foot fences as opposed to six foot fences to not have my gates loaded from above that are a min minimum of 56 or 60, whatever, yeah. whatever the state code is on that. That's higher than four feet. Yeah, I, think it's four I can also tell you that these is one of those infinity pools and it would be pretty complicated to explain it all because six feet is an aggregate of retaining walls. So, so you have a retaining wall that's four feet and then a, by code a 30 inch rail on top of that I'm seven feet. Right. In areas where the retaining wall slopes down to zero, there, there's the first 10 feet of it that are between four and six, and the rest of it carries the day anyway. So this is actually less innocuous than a flat pool in the middle of a field and someone coming, may I have a four foot as opposed to a six foot. Most of this is Kate Fields retaining areas and designs that are uh, in, in, in many places, seven feet. Okay. That's really all I have. So basically, it's less for a four foot fence versus six foot fence. Four foot for a six foot. Similar to what we heard last. And, and I do understand even a permit was issued on that yeah, yeah. as drawn. But I, I seem to recall the. In August, we approved one. I think it was you weren't here. Cool. Yeah. It's just a question of whether everybody comes back or at some point to just stamp them and say, we're just going to do it. But as of right now, that no determinations had been made. No, that and is, we that wanted to come plan. in and ask that is the plan for to it. go right. with the state building code. Right. That's why. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions? Pretty clear cut and dry. Any no questions? Uh, Mr. Kelly, you're on this one, obviously. Any butters or interested parties to this? No one's afraid the deer are gonna get in. Um okay, so uh Kathy and Jeff Siegel before the board for property located 227 East Over Road, tax assessors map 65, lot 17, seeking a dimensional variance uh, under Article 5, Section I-5 to construct a fence closing a swimming pool under six feet. 
applicants are requesting that they be allowed to put a four foot fence where six foot is required. So Mr. Furell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variance of a four foot fence versus the, the current required six foot fence, primarily because it's been represented that in the future, the town of Portsmouth will revert to a four foot fence requirement. Um, uh, with that in mind, denial of this petition would be would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. Thank you, Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve uh, the four foot fence. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. I uh, vote also to approve the dimensional variance to allow a four foot fence. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I vote to approve uh, for reasons already stated. Thank you. Chairman also votes to approve for reasons previously stated, given the fact that as the ordinance is being rewritten, um, as the uh, assistant town planner has um, stated, the ordinance will then mirror what the state building code is and will go to four feet anyway. So I can't see making the applicant go to six foot when you know, this time next year it would be four. Take it down, right? Makes it, this is a, in a, a large expense there. So it's been approved, Mr. Chappelle. Thank you for everything. Thank you. As fast as I can do three. I no, no, appreciate that very much. So why'd you bring him? Thank you. Can you come next month too? <laughs> okay. Mr. Lorenzo, you'll be on this one. Um, last item is a petition by Michael Sabra of property located at 69 Fountain Avenue, tax assessor's map 21, lot 167, seeking a special use permit uh, and dimensional variance um, under Article 4, Section B, Article 6, Section A4, for, quote, retroactive permission to enlarge a structure on a substandard lot of record. This ought to be good. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, Gerard Galvin, members of the board, Gerard Galvin from Galvin Law, representing um, Mr. Sabra. Uh, yes, I, you know, to harken back to your original application um, that you heard tonight, uh, this is a situation where some portions of the uh, uh, building uh, did commence, uh, and we'll get into that as we uh, work through the testimony. Uh, Michael grew up in Tiverton, Rhode Island. He currently resides in Austin, Texas with his two sons. Uh, his <clears throat> wife, unfortunately, passed away in 2016. And when that happened, he um, wanted to uh, buy a place to be closer to his family, his mother and his brothers up here. Uh, and so every summer since, they, they purchased 69 Fountain Ave and they've spent the summers here since. Uh, about a year ago, Michael started thinking about some small improvements to the property. Um, at that point, he was thinking about some changes to the second floor, uh, as well as some of the changes that you see uh, before you tonight. He was looking for contractors to discuss this with. Everybody was extremely backed up. There was no hope of uh, actually uh, proceeding uh, in any short order. And then out of a blue, uh, the, this past spring, a friend pointed him to a framing uh, company that had become available. And so he uh, signed them up to begin some work. Um, you'll see in the plans there, there's a sort of three components to the application here. Uh, You're getting the plans up. Um, there, there's a, a bump out to the front door that creates a little bit of a, uh, a walk-in and a mudroom area. Uh, there's a bump out uh, that and next to a piece of the house that where there already was a bump out, a little bit of an extension to that bump out to create some additional living space on the east side of the house, as well as um, requesting a overhang roof over an existing patio on the rear of the house. So these are not um, significant or substantial changes. And you'll see photos in there of uh, some of that work having been begun. He was then contacted by the building official who said, please stop. You have begun this without the required relief. He did so. He stopped immediately and began retaining the uh, the team uh, to get the application in for permission for, uh, for this project. 
Uh, so we are before you, we filed the application for the special use permit for the expansion on a uh, non-conforming lot, um, as well as four forms of dimensional relief, three setback uh, variances, as well as lot coverage. Uh, the lot coverage is currently 20.9%, so it's already over lot coverage. We're asking for an additional 5%, uh, and we can walk through each of those elements of the project. Uh, I do have Mr. Sabre here. He flew up from Austin, Texas to be here. Um, he regrets the fact that this project started uh, uh, before he had the permission. He wanted to be here to, to ask you for your permission for this project in person. Uh, Tom Owens is here from Civil Engineering Concepts, who did the engineering work, as well as Mr. Houle, who uh, did submit a report that speaks to each element of the criteria um, uh, that we are requesting here. Um, so uh, certainly Michael uh, loves Island Park. He loves where he lives, and he tried to take it, all of that into account when designing what he perceives to be very minor improvements that will nonetheless uh, greatly improve his quality of life with his sons at the house. Uh, so with that, um, unless there's questions for me, I'll, I'll bring Mr. Sabre up and ask him a few questions. Nope, by all means, bring him up. I swear to tell the truth. I do. Full name and address for Heather, Michael please. Robert Sabre, Wealth Ladders, 69 Fountain Avenue. Thank you. So, uh, Michael, you live in and work mostly full time in Texas, correct? Right. All right. But originally you're from here in Tiverton? Correct. Okay. And you do your best to spend most of the summers here with your boys, correct? Okay. And you recently, as they've been growing, you've been contemplating making a few changes to the home. Correct. Okay. Uh, and you discuss those changes with your immediate neighbors, correct? Correct. Okay. And they all support the changes you're looking to make, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and you have, in fact, already submitted several letters of support for your application, correct? Correct. Mr. Chairman, I, I did submit several letters last week uh, for the file. Do you have those? Uh, let me double check and make sure. Uh, I have one from uh, James Culifer, the Wardens, Rolo, got Bois and Durant. And then today we did see one more like we said that Absolutely. Okay. Two neighbors and one letter. Is there another one? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. I don't know if I had that one. Now, uh, as I was describing briefly to the Chairman and to the board, Michael, there are essentially three areas of proposed changes to the to the house, correct? Correct. Could you describe uh, the change to the front steps in the entranceway? Uh, what was there and why is it important for you to add that change? Sure, there was a cement front landing and when you opened up the front door, the door swung to probably within an inch of the staircase that came from upstairs where there were two bedrooms, downstairs. Uh, and then immediately to the right is my boy's bedroom. Um, and it was quite a hazard. The wind blows off of the river through the, the back door and would oftentimes slam that door. And as it was just a bottleneck and that door would swing with wind and it was again, jamming right up against the banister. Um, so that front addition pushes the front door out. Um, in the images, it looks kind of bigger because there was no way to do it without put, putting a little roof on top of it. Um, the intent was really just to get that door away from the banister um, and give access to the boys' bedroom. All right, now on the eastern side of the house, uh, which is where the driveway comes in from the road. Scott, can I stop you? I'm just gonna ask, Aaron, can you bring up the drawing? Um, it's number two called Sabre Residence. Uh, it was from New England Home Design. Nope, the, not that one. one. That one. Thank you. So just for the record, Mr. Gallon, because this is, at least for me, easy to see because we can see the proposed covered patio where it's in line with what already exists and same on the other. You know what I mean? Correct. Yes. Thank you. That's right. Okay. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, but go no, ahead. No, no, it, it is helpful. And so, yeah. so 
you know, Michael, if, if you want to use the, the diagram here as a reference, as you described, maybe first the, or you just yeah, so you can see the, the red lines, that's where the door used to go. Right. It was, yeah, it was just a hazard really. Yeah. Uh, and now you see where the door is and that was really the, the, the true function of moving that out. But again, architecturally, you have to it just looks bigger and more grandiose. Which was the portion that was started? That portion. That so that or just that door. Two portions. Two, two portions. Started. Okay. The the one where you see the new wall, ten foot by nine. Yes. Yes. Also was started and and sort of framed out, uh, but it is then stopped. Right. Next right. Street. Okay. Thank and, you. And Michael, if you want to go ahead and describe uh, what that change does for your living space um, in the house there. Sure. You, um, so the red dotted line is where the wall used to be. Mm -hmm. And now the blue line is where we built the new wall. Right. You can see towards the top of the screen that's facing this Connaught River, there's right. a little bump out already. So, yep. there's, so there's a bump out on that side. There's the stove on the other side, the open kitchen, right? There was we had this a little love seat that was all you could fit there to get it away from the stove and then not protrude into that bump out. And so as like boys have grown, it's the three of us on this love seat trying to watch TV. And it was like, well, if we just push this wall out that way, it not only it just opens up the whole area. Now you can have a full size couch and maybe even a sectional or something like right. that. So that's right. what that did. And, and and you just squared that off. There was no further encroachment to the encroachment, the existing Correct. encroachment. To the use the terms of the attorney that was up before us, it, that was like a nook and a cranny. And yeah. that was not a nook and a cranny anymore. It's actually right. one continuous squared off living space. All right. Now, moving over to the uh, proposed covered patio, what exists there now um, in that space? Uh, there's really a patio. And on that patio is uh, patio furniture. And uh, this kind of river is not very far from that from the house. I mean, we look right down at it, and the morning dew uh, just soaks the patio cushions. I know it sounds like a first world problem or whatever, but you know, just <laughs> us going out and every day you sit down in your shorts, your pants, or God forbid, I have people come over and visit. And so, well, I take the cushions off every day and put them back on the next day. And well, there's nowhere to put them. The house is so small unless I drag them all the way down into the basement. And again, first world problem, but single dad, two kids, I'm not doing that. So what we like to do is basically just, it's, oh, and never mind the, the bird droppings, the seagull droppings, it's like a wood tunnel. So the seagulls just float there and poop all over the, the furniture. So the idea is just to extend that roof line. So it, it wouldn't be interior space. It would just be an extension of the roof line covering the furniture from rain and elements. And again, it wouldn't extend further into the setback than where you're current, where you currently are. Correct. Correct. It would square off that portion of the house okay. and remain exterior. All right. And in your opinion, the these elements, these three elements, this is the least relief necessary to achieve the appropriate improvements to your living space, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I had for Mr. Sabre. And then I have uh, two other well, I have a question. A couple questions. questions for you. Yeah. So, yeah. so, Mr. Sabre, when did you um, purchase the property? In... Uh, my wife passed March 16, bought it in like April or May of that year. Just looked for a place up around here. My mom. What year was that? March of six, 2016. Was it was that house like sort of still the summer cottage type? It was. It's um. Do you know Jeff Furtado? He used to be chief yep. of police. It's Jeff. It's the house Jeff grew up in. Okay. All right. Um. And so you've had it since 2016. Yes. Um. He and his brother, and so after the mom passed. To the yeah. best of um, your knowledge and, and having owned that, has there been many houses along that road that have now been renovated? Uh, the one immediately, if you're facing the river, immediately to my left. Right. Yes, that's and then down the street, there's a number of others as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Just so it's become very common in that area for people now to be renovating what used to be probably just summer homes to a little bit more year-round living type thing. That's correct. Okay. All right. Stu? So I think this is a question for the board. I mean, the previous application, we included the stern patio, which if it's permeable, I don't believe it should be if it's permeable. 
Um, but we did in the other application. Well, he did that out of an abundance of caution. Well, and do I never so said we. So. I'm, could I just make sure I'm sure of the question? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean include the patio? In other words, when it comes to lot coverage. Because there's some dis there's some like up in the air. Mm -hmm. Do you include? We're not talking about impermeable. We're talking about permeable surfaces. Right. So, court on on the previous yeah. said, okay, he's going to include the stone patio. So he, now, I think he did it because he didn't want to get into a discussion. Well, I'm just saying you're not going to include it. So it's up to you, the chairman, to make that decision. Is... Um. No, I know, but for, I mean, it is existing. I mean, I, I hear you, I guess, I guess. Right, but lot, you lot to, coverage is lot coverage. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's now going to be the interpretation, which I'm not clear that that's how well we have been operating. I know I've, the court I, threw I, that I, in there. Go ahead, Aaron. So my interpretation is permeable surfaces is not included in the lot coverage? Because it's permeable, right? Because it's, it's permeable, right? And it has no, it, right. it won't shed, right? And see, and I, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you as well. I was just bringing. I mean, I don't know if anybody else does, but so, well, the, 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 the other thing that Mr. Wool just pointed out is that if, because this is existing, right. we wouldn't be asking for relief for the overhang, right? Yeah, but your whole but your lot coverage variance lot coverage, lot coverage, lot coverage so includes so everything. No, but, and but, old. but we added just the whole place. No, but we we're seeking lot coverage for the overhead. Right. But it, but it's those set downs that say stone patio, stone patio. The two lower. I, that's what I think, Mr. Albert, it's it's sort of like it's almost irrelevant right now because we're kind of in agreement that if it's a a permeable surface, it wouldn't. But what we're saying is that was, say, concrete patios, okay? Right. Just because it pre-exists doesn't mean it's not adding to the lot. Your lot coverage would be total of the building, the patio, any impermeable surface, okay? In your case, we're saying it's it's permeable, okay. so it's irrelevant. Okay. Okay? And I like that. Permeable? It's permeable. Oh, yes. it's permeable. It's permeable. Oh. It's absolutely permeable. Right. Stone. I was going to right. break out of it. Oh, by yeah. stone, you yeah. mean like gravel kind of stuff as opposed to pavers? Pavers, that's permeable. Pavers. Permeable pavers. Not if they're cemented together, right? No, Most of them are cemented not together. Right. 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 Oh, well, see, water can seep through. Right. 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 All that good stuff. So, okay. okay. Lesson on that later. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Sue? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Galvin, next. Okay. Um, we'll go to uh, Tom Owens, who's a surveyor. Okay. <clears throat> Want to tell the truth? Yes. Full name and address for Heather. Thomas Michael Owen. I reside at 127 Hanover Street, Fall River, Massachusetts. Uh, thanks, Tom. So you're a professional land surveyor in Rhode Island, correct? That's correct. And, and you're licensed to that uh, certification? Yes, sir. Okay. And your company was retained to help Michael uh, with, with the engineering involved in these renovations, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, we've already walked through some of the setbacks, so I don't need you to go through line by line uh, unless there's questions from the board. Um, but I want to ask you, in your opinion, does a lot size of 4,792 uh, square feet in an R10 zone present a hardship? Yes, it does. Okay. And is there any element of this plan that's being proposed that will have an adverse impact on the neighbors or the surrounding area? Not in my opinion. Okay. And does the design here um, change the character of the neighborhood in any way? No, it doesn't. And does the building... Uh, of the proposed additions provide for adequate fire protection? Yes, it does. And does it allow for adequate light between the buildings? Yes, it does. Does it create a hazard or a nuisance in the neighborhood? No, it does not. And is safe vehicular access provided for? Yes, there's a driveway on the property. All right. Um, is there any noise or smoke or odors or light uh, that are created by this project uh, mm -hmm. that cr create problems for the neighborhood? No, sir. Okay. 
uh, and it will not alter the solar rights of any neighbor? No. All right. And in your opinion, is the health, safety, and welfare of the community pr protected? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I had for Mr. Owens. With some um, questions. Any questions from Mr. Owen? No. All set there, Mr. Galvin. Thank you. Way to tell the truth. I do. Name and address for Heather. James Houle, H-O-U-L-E, 198 Union Street, Portsmouth. Mr. Galvin, in order to expedite, I don't see any reason why Mr. Houle needs to go line for line, item for item, word for word on this whole report. He can just testify that this is his report he has submitted, unless you see otherwise. No, I don't see any reason uh, why to do that, unless there's anything you want to highlight, Mr. Houle. I just request that that be uh, entered as a full exhibit. Yeah, I'm, I, I have no problem with that. I've really covered everything. I only wanted to point out what I was trying to say about this lot coverage is all the perm, all that surface was already there. So the on the extension of where they're adding on and the awning on the back is already over what uh, it would be considered lot coverage if you considered it lot coverage. Yes. But, so, but, so it, there's no the extension. Point, the point is, Mr. Hu, is when you calculate up lot coverage, you can't say because that's already there, we don't have to add it. You have to add it all. And then say, okay. That's it. All right. Okay. That, Not a problem. All right. I, I get it. All but right. otherwise, the report really speaks for itself and yeah. covered all the standards. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Hull. Uh, Unless I, there's any other questions, that's all uh, I was planning on. Okay. Um, that being said, um, any of butters or interested parties to this? No. Uh, anyone online? No. All right. Now I get to read. Thanks for the extra. I know. But I have to. Uh, let's see. I have a letter from a Colonel Wilder Snodgrass. Dear Butters, uh, dear Butter notification, Michael Sabra, is it pronounced Sabra? Oh, All right, you're, you're originally from Tiverton. How should we pronounce it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, for a letter attached, Chairman James Knott, Zoning Board of Review, Town of Portsmouth. Dear Chairman Knott, first, thank you for your service on behalf of the town. I'm a homeowner at 205 Thorpe Avenue, um, located with a 200 feet of Michael um, Sabre's home which is special use permit and dimensional variance for um, retro and excuse me, because it's handwritten uh, permission to a larger structure on a substandard lot is requested and under consideration by the Portsmouth Zoning Board of Review. I've been given a tour of the property by the owner, Mr. Sabra, and have no objections whatsoever uh, on the improvements. I hope you will approve his uh, retroactive application. Uh, this one is from a Mr. James Burke um, Rich and Richard Guimon, Town of Portsmouth. Dear sirs, we, the undersigned, are in support of the application of variance requested by Michael Sabra for the property located at 69 Fountain Avenue, Portsmouth. The project will improve the use of the property and only enhance the neighborhood. Uh, both their addresses are 43 Fountain and 45 Fountain. Um, I have a... Uh, Letter from a Tim Durand, 13 Thorpe Avenue, to whom this may concern. I, Tim Durand of 13 Thorpe Avenue, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, approve and acknowledge the home improvements on the property owned by Michael Sabra at 69 Fountain Avenue, Portsmouth. This stated, I, Tim Durand, have no issues or objection of the home improvements and progress and completion. This is from Christine Gedbois. Um, 69 Fountain Avenue, regarding that. Uh, she's at 75 Fountain. As buddy neighbors, we would respectfully like to comment on recent proposed renovations to this property. The replacement of older vinyl siding and windows will greatly improve Mr. Sabre's property and indirectly increase our own home value. The small extension of his home, while close to our shared property line, does not negatively impact our property. In this older, tightly built neighborhood, the improvements of neighboring properties are much welcomed. And as such, we support Mr. Sabre's efforts 
was respectfully submitted Christine Gadbois. Um, this is from J. Patrick Rollo. Um, to whom it may concern, we have received notice from the town's Ports of Zoning Board about the hearing on 1019 2023 regarding Michael Sabre's special use permit. As Director Butters to Michael's property, we are aware of what he intends to do and have no objection to his application. Our property is directly connected to Mr. Sabre's as we reside at 63 Fountain Avenue. We are also willing to speak to anyone on the zoning board about this application to voice our views. We hope the board approves his application. Um, this is from a Sharon and Jed Warden. We, Sharon and Jed Warden, are the neighbors of Michael Sabre, 69 Fountain Avenue. We are aware of the house additions, renovations that Mr. Sabra is requesting for his property. We would like to express our support for the special use permit that Mr. Sabra has applied for. We attest that we have no objections for the home additions and renovations at Mr. Sabra's property. Mr. Sabra has our support to move forward with his home renovations. Thank you, Sharon and Jed Warden, 12 Thorpe Avenue, Portsmouth. Last one from a James Culifer of 68 Fountain Avenue to the town of Portsmouth. It is to my knowledge, Michael Sabre of 69 Fountain Avenue has applied for a variance to his property to complete construction of the said plot. I respectfully have no concerns for the construction to continue on the estate stated. My wife and I wish Michael and his boys many years of enjoyment and a home with more room for growing boys to flourish within their new and needed space. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter and consider the Sabre family this opportunity. Sincerely, James Culliford. Done. So, that being said, you most certainly can. It incorporates the lot coverage. I get a different lot coverage. Did you include the needs? Did you include? Yes. Do we the no, well, not not the eighteen inches. The eighteen inches doesn't count. We 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 specifically asked that question of the zoning officer. The yeah, overhang of an eighteen inch underneath overhang. eighteen inches was not to be included. I'll talk to you about that after. Oh. Something else. Okay. So we good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Michael Saber is before the board for property at 69 Fountain Avenue, which is tax assessor's map 21, lot 167, uh, seeking a special use permit and dimensional variances uh, for all <coughs> retroactive permission to a larger structure on a substandard lot of record. The applicant has given testimony that they meet all of the special use criteria. They're seeking an eight foot, nine inch front yard variance, a 2.5 foot side yard variance, and a 4.4 foot side yard variance to the west. Applicants also given testimony that the encroachment is no further than the what already exists. They're just looking to enlarge the structure in those areas. So, uh, Mr. Fiorell. Mr. Chairman, I vote to approve the dimensional variances on the front um, east side west side of the property and I vote to approve the 5.9% or actually yeah yeah 5.9% lot coverage variance um, as testified and as shown in these drawings um, they're basically squaring up the house uh, not encroaching on on setbacks any further than it already does with the with the exception of the um, 2.2 or 2 foot 9 inch extension on the front of the house, which is being done in order to um, allow the front door greater swing access and improve a safety feature. Um, uh, granting this variance does not change the characteristics of the neighborhood. Uh, this is a reasonable relief given the use of the house and its its upgrade from sort of a summer love shack to a <laughs> to a more uh, year-round home, and denial would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. Just waiting for the B-52s to stop. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. 
And I also vote to approve the special use permit for a substandard lot of record. Uh, this is a lot that's approximately half this, the R10 requirement. And it's uh, commendable that uh, Mr. Saber is limiting his improvements to this footprint and not encroaching any further on the lot. Um, uh, the, uh, the special use permit on a substandard lot of record criteria has been um, attested to be met and to deny would amount to more than a mere inconvenience. Thank you. Ms. Horowitz. I vote to approve the reasons that the state would accept the <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Donovan. I I also vote to approve for the reasons stated by Mr. Carell and as admitted by uh, Ms. Horowitz. Thank you, Mr. Lorenzo. I vote to approve for reasons previously stated. All of them. Reasons. The chairman also votes to approve for reasons previously stated. I don't believe there was any malice with the by the applicant at all and, and, and going further. Interestingly enough, and I brought it up that you know that area, there's a lot of renovations going. That's really becoming a very nice area down there. And you know, you can't trip without needing some sort of variance or a lot coverage to do anything. So uh, by all means, you've got full support of your almost your whole neighborhood down there. So good luck in the future. It's been approved. All righty. All righty. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Can I have a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.